So today in Test Case TV, we're going to start covering buttons, switches, and uh, everything else that leads into. So this one's gonna be a lot of fun. It's the one that I am most excited by because of the Controller Sense project, I have learned that anything conductive can be something we can take advantage of. So uh, without further ado, let's do this. First thing I'm gonna do for the entirety of this video is I'm going to make sure that my multimeter right here is set for uh, continuity. All right, so that's this little icon that once again looks like the uh, little Wi-Fi symbol. And every time that I touch the leads, so where these wires go, out to my little clips that I'm gonna use because this is gonna make it a lot easier to put it on something and have it just stay there. But every time I touch, we're gonna hear a noise. Now that's gonna be important because we use this to understand a component without completely taking it apart. And we're gonna start with a button. So buttons are something that we've used a lot in our, our game controllers, um, in microwaves, and your CD player, and pretty much anything else you interface with that makes a click, it's a button. Your mouse has buttons. Your mouse wheel has a button. It may also have an encoder, but that's a different story. Uh, what else has buttons? Pretty much everything. So everything that we interface with that makes a click has a button. And not all buttons are necessarily just the clicky kind where you hear the, um, some buttons are uh, just basically soft, uh, soft metal surfaces that, um, that just make contact. And we're gonna discuss how that's taken place because that's gonna up a whole world of things that are possible to us that we may not have ever once thought of as a button or a switch or a lever. Let's start with this button. Right now, if we look at it, we'll see that the button obviously has the point we push. And this one in particular has four pins. So we need to use the meter to help us understand what's going on inside between the four pins. So here's our game plan. We're gonna observe the different features of the button. The point we push, we got a leg this way, leg this way, leg this way, leg this way. So these are our four pins coming off the button. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say attach a meter here, and then I'm gonna take the other side of the, uh, of the meter, and I'm gonna attach it here. I'm gonna see if it beeps. So this is gonna give me data as far as what's going on inside. So now we have our button. I'm gonna take my first little clip to the lead away from me on my left. All right, just like this. And then I'm gonna take my second lead and I'll put it on the other side. So now we know that inside here, without touching the button, it's connected. So what I wanna know while this is beeping is if I push that button, does the beeping stop? The answer is no. So what that tells me uh, is that even if I push the button or not, these two pins are connected inside this device. So that, that, that means that that's pretty much just like having a wire go through the piece. Now let's try the other side. So I'm gonna switch over and then I'm going to test the other side. Beeps through. So that means that this button or this pin is attached to that pin through the device as well. So we now know that we have two rails. Now let's see about checking this guy, uh, two of them on the same side, all right? So I'm gonna take my connector here that's already connected to the bottom one. I'm gonna take this guy and connect it to the top, like so. No beeps, nothing. But every time I push, I now know that it is dependent on my pushing this down to connect those two wires. Now what I can take from this is because I know that this is a constant line and this is a constant line that when I push a button, these two wires will be connected. 
That also means that these two wires will also be connected because we know that these are two rails and that um, that's just what we have gained from this. And I can, I'll test it. So I'll switch to the other sides. So on this side of the wire and on this side of the wire, no beep. And then I'll push exactly like I expect. Now what happens if I take one of these and I put it diagonal? So now I'm going through the wire or through the button all the way across to, uh, to this guy and this guy. So nothing's getting, uh, there's no beeps. I'm gonna push the button. So now we know that without any doubt those are connected in rails and the only time they bridge across is once that's pressed. So what's happening inside the button, that's super fun. And I know this from taking a button apart because that's how I learn is we have basically a wire that comes in, goes across, a wire comes in and goes across. And then this guy's got uh, two pads that are in here and this middle one has a pad in the center. And when you press this button down, you're actually making this disc, which is bowed out like this, go concave. That's that, that's the springing sound of metal just snapping. That's that. So when it goes concave, this conductive pad here and that one are now being uh, connected to this one through this disc. And that's what's happening inside this button. And that's, that's what I know because I've taken that one apart. But we can deduce all of the functionality of the button as we just did with this meter. Now let's move on to a switch. Yeah, now we've got a new component and we're gonna take a moment to observe the features of the switch itself. We have the body of it, rectangular. Uh, we have this piece up top that moves back and forth. So I know that this piece can move to one of two places and that's it. So I do this or here, right? So this is optional, make this a little arrow. And then if I look at the bottom, I can see that there's three pins and those are gonna be my contacts. So we're gonna do the same exact thing we did with the button where we attach these wires to our, our multimeter set for continuity and we're gonna see what happens, collect some data. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the outside edges. So one of these is going to my first wire. The other one is gonna to go to my third wire. And I'm doing this mostly because it's easiest to get to. And now with that being said, there's no, uh, there's no sound between this wire and this wire right now. I'll move the switch, move the switch. So now I know that this wire uh, right here and this wire right here does not have any connection whatsoever. No matter what I do, the two outside wires don't actually interact. So I'll erase this. I'm gonna put my first connection and I'll put it right in the middle. Okay, so I hear no sounds. I'm gonna move the switch, move it back switch move it back so what this tells me is that when the switch position is on the left side farthest away from these two pins there's no contact on these two pins but when I move it over there is contact so that that's that's interesting um, in that I now know that I can check between two wires whether the switch is in this place or that place because it can only be two spots so if I switch my red wire to my first position, so I'm gonna do that now. So it's beeping with the switch in the first position and it's not beeping with my switch in the second position. So what that's telling me is that under the switch is another conductive surface and it is wide enough to go from our, our middle wire to the outside edges. 
So as I move it, I'm changing where this conductive material is inside the switch back and forth. And since I only have two positions, I've only got two states for this switch. Now, after using our multimeter, we better understand how this switch works. We can move on to say another switch. So from this guy, we're gonna to go to a rocker switch. So I'll get rid of this, set it off the side. And once again, the first thing I always start with is observing what we're working with. So right now I got this shape. It's only got two positions, but this guy only has two pins. It looks like it may have at some point had a third, but I don't have that. So let's observe what we have. I got two pins. And then this shape that seems to kind of look like this, but have two positions. All right, so we'll call this one, this two. So with this down on the one position, my guess right now is going to be that this might not beep. Although you may think that because I'm pushing closer on this side that it should, um, sometimes on these switches, the conductive material is opposite. So let's connect it and find out, because that's how we know. We can speculate all day, every day, forever, or we can do science and find out immediately. No sound. Connect it. Two wires, no sound in the one down position. But in two it is. So now I know how this component works, just as I figured out how the button works, how the switch works. And what we're really starting to observe isn't just how those components by themselves will always work. We're starting to observe with our multimeter and testing things, how most of our interaction with tech and everything else is going to be managing conductive surfaces. Because that, that's what's happening inside here. There's these two pins. And once this side is pressed down, there's something that bridges these two pins inside. But if it's pressed down, then on the uh, one position, then it's off of those two. So now I can take all these things, anything, like attach wires to, and it beeps, and use it to make a controller or a, uh, a trigger for something. Like if I wanted to, I could put a wire on my door and then another like aluminum piece of paper or copper tape and every time my door is closed make that close a circuit for a light or a sensor for a microcontroller or anything and that just opens up such a world of crazy fun super fun um, that is going to be the best segue into playing around with testing everything so uh, continuity makes a beeping sound when I touch anything that allows electricity to go from one pin to the next. So let's test some fun things.